Hi guys, welcome to Mr. Cloud Book channel. In this particular video, we are going to discuss about how to secure our EC2 instance. So I am going to explain the 20 tips to secure your EC2 instance properly. Mastering the AWS EC2 security. So these 20 steps you should definitely follow to make sure your EC2 instance more secure. So these should be definitely followed in the organizations. The first tip is, is to use a strong IAM roles. So well, IAM stands for the identity and access management. In a nutshell, IAM roles are like personalized keys that are grant access to specific actions or resources on your AWS console. So they determine what different users or systems can do within your AWS console. Here is a real life scenario just like the one I faced not too long ago. When you create a content on YouTube, you may need to give the access to others like your video editor, manager or even the other collaborators. But what happens if you, their accounts get compromised? So without strong IAM roles, you risk overexposing of your channel. Instead of wide ranging permissions, you should follow the principle of least privilege. So the least privilege principle means giving users or systems only the permissions they need to perform their specific tasks nothing more so we have to provide the IAM role with the uh, least privileges access so we don't have to provide the complete administrator access for our EC2 instance so everyone for the learning purpose everyone using the administrator access for the roles or the policies attaching to the IAM roles don't use like that so whatever the policies required for your project so just open those policies only so just for learning purpose, we are opening administrator access, but don't open the administrator access for in the higher levels or in the organizations. So you have to open the only the required policies for your EC2 instance with for the IAM role. So we have to, for the second tip, we have to enable the VPC. So we have to isolate the instances in a virtual private cloud to control network traffic. Uh, think of your VPC as a gated community. Your internet facing EC2 instances are like houses within this community and other instances are in separate neighborhoods you control who enters and leaves each neighborhood which restricts network traffic effectively and prevent outsiders from easily accessing your instance that's why we need to enable the vpc to isolate your ec2 instance for the third tip security groups configure the firewall rules using security groups to restrict inbound and outbound traffic so for the real life scenario security groups are like bouncers at the club you define rules to permit or deny a traffic to and from your EC2 instance. For, a, for example, you set a security group for your database server that only allows inbound traffic from the web server effectively blocking the other unauthorized access. Uh, we don't have to provide the permissions to our database, right? That's why we need to provide the only inbound access to authorized persons only. That's why we need to open a particular uh, rules in our inbound or outbound traffic. If you need the 8080 port for the Jenkins, then only open only 8080 port. You don't have to open all traffic for your security group. That's the same thing we are going to use inside our security group. So that's why we have to configure the firewall rules using the security groups to restrict inbound and outbound traffic. So whenever we use all traffic, everyone can access our resources inside our database and everything. That's why we need to provide the security and we need to provide some rules. So for the fourth tip, network ACLs. Add an extra layer of your production with the network access control list to filter traffic at the subnet level. So network cases will uh, filter the traffic at the subnet level. Security groups will filter the traffic at the EC2 level. So network cases act as a neighborhood security patrols. So you define rules to control traffic entering or exiting subnets within your VPC. For instance, you create a network cache for your web server and subnet allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic while blocking other types of communication. That's why we need to enable the network ACLs. And for the fifth tip, we have to provide the key pairs. We have to use the key pairs. Use SSH key pairs instead of passwords for secure instant access. So we are going to use the SSH PAM files right, to connect your PuTTY or to the mobile extreme. Instead of using the traditional username and password to access your EC2 instance, you generate an SSH key pair it's like having a digital fingerprint to access the instance. So you need to provide the private key, which is kept as a secret. This significantly enhances the security as it's harder for attackers to guess or steal your key. So that's why we need to use the key pairs for our EC2 instances rather than the uh, traditional username and password to access your EC2 instance. For the next tip, uh, patch regularly. So just as you routinely 
updates your smartphone apps to fix vulnerabilities you regularly apply software updates and security patches to your residential this ensures that known security issues are resolved reducing the risk of exploitation so we need to update your instance up to date so you have to provide a sudo apt update and everything for a every time whenever we connect and keep on updating your ec2 instance and make them to up to date with security patches also so we, this will reduce the risk of your ec2 instance getting attacked for the next tip so disable the root access never use a root accounts instead of use sudo and im users with the proper permissions so imagine your aws account as a company with multiple employees instead of giving everyone full access i mean root access you provide limited permissions as a iam users based on their roles when someone leaves the company no longer needs access you revoke their access similar to deactivating a patch so this is how you have to disable the root access and for the next tip instance isolation so isolate the sensitive workloads on separate instances or subnets so picture your aws account as a multi departmental office you have separate conference rooms or different departments since two meetings i mean workloads happen in a secured rooms with restricted with restricted access this prevents employees from accidentally or intentionally accessing the information from the other department that's why we need to provide the instance isolation so we can provide the since two workloads on the different subnets for the next tip so encryption at rest so your ec2 instance store customer data by enabling the ebs volume so encryption it's like securing those data files in a locked safe even if someone manages to access the storage the can't read the data without the encryption key that's why we need to provide the encryption for our data in our ec2 instance so users we use the abs volumes for our ec2 instance so we need to use the encryption to protect the data so everyone should learn about how to encrypt and everything inside our ec2 instance also so because basically most of the applications we deploy on the ec2 instance only so if if you deploy using the eks or anything everything will be works on the ec2 instance only that's why you need to encrypt everything so you have to learn the encryption also for our ubs volumes and everything and for the next enabling the mfa so this is also another tip so we have to enable the multi factor authentication for our added login security so just as you need both your bank card and pin to access your account multi factor authentication requires you to provide a password and temporary code from your mobile app to access your aws account even if someone knows your password the can't get in without your mobile device so whenever you use the multi factor authentication you will get a otp to your mobile only so if they know your password also the can't hack your phone they don't get your otp right so that's why we need to enable the mfa for ec2 instance or your aws account for the next instance metadata limit access to instance metadata to prevent information exposure instance metadata contains information about your ec2 instance by limiting access to it you are ensuring that only authorized application and authorized users can access that data preventing the information exposure so no other users can uh, access that information next step we have to use the bastion host which is securely manages instances in a private subnets to the a bastion host imagine your ec2 instance as a secure rooms a bastion host is like a reception desk outside those rooms to access the secure rooms you must pass through the reception desk i mean bastion host which checks your credentials and grant access only to the authorized individuals or authorized users that's why we need to use the bastion host in our ec2 instances for the security purposes and for the next monitoring we need to set up the cloud watch alarms is like a having a security camera in your home if someone tries to break in so the alarm goes off alerting you or the authorities similarly cloud watch alarms detect unusual activities in your aws environment and notify you to take a action that's why we need to set up the cloud watch alarms for our monitoring of our ec2 instance to respond to our suspicious activities backup data is the next tip so regularly we need to backup your important data so to prevent data loss so think of data backups as a creating duplicates of important documents if your primary copy is damaged or lost you can retrieve the duplicate to re recover your original information regular backups prevent data loss due to accidents hardware failures or any cyber threats so for the next tip disable the unnecessary ports 
so it's like closing doors and windows in your house when you are not using them by setting down unused network ports you reduce the entry points for your potential cyber attacks making it harder for attackers to gain access so that's why we need to close the unused ports so if you are only using for 8080 jenkins port and you have to remove other any ports like uh, you have to keep it 22 and 80 443 and 8080 and if you have open any other ports and you have to close those ports then it makes it harder for attackers to gain access so that's why we need to disable unnecessary ports and for the next aws inspector so run security assessments with aws inspector to identify vulnerabilities in your ec2 aws inspector is your security audit team it's regular it regularly inspects your aws resources just like a security team regularly checks your facility for your vulnerabilities it identifies potential security issues and provides recommendations for our mitigation so that's why we need to use the aws inspector in our aws ec2 and for the next ddos protection so use aws shield for ddos protection especially for internet phishing instances aws shield is our digital fortress wall it guards your internet facing instances against ddos attacks much like a casual wall defense against the enemy assaults it ensures your online resources remain available during the attacks so that's why we need to provide the ddos at production for our aws ec2 instances and for the next iam policies iam policies are like personalized access cards for employees in your company you give employee only the access they need to do their job just as you limit the permissions granted to iam users in your aws environment avoiding the over permissioning so that's why we need to review and fine tune iam policies to avoid over permissioning for the next regular audits Conducting a security audit and a penetration testing is like a periodically having a security expert evaluate your fortress defenses. Conducting a security audit and penetration testing is like periodically having a security expert evaluate your fortress defenses. They identify weakness and vulnerabilities just as, just as audits and testing identity areas for improvement in your digital security. So that's why we need to provide the regular audits to your EC2 instances and everything. And finally, trusted advisor. Think of a trusted advisor as a knowledgeable consultant who regularly reviews your digital setup and provides recommendations. This is similar to having an experienced mentor who advises you on best practice to optimize and check so AWS environment. So that's why we need to use the trusted advisor in our AWS. These real-time examples illustrate how each security tip can be applied in our AWS EC2 environment, making it easier to understand their practical importance. So you have to use these tips in order to make your security for our AWS EC2 instance. So these tips will help you to master your EC2 security. So thanks for watching the video and keep on supporting to the Mr. Cloudbook channel.